Hello, welcome to the NPTEL online certification course on deep learning. Since our last class, we were discussing about the various challenges which are faced during the training of deep neural network. So, one of the challenge that uh, we are currently discussing is that how do you choose the appropriate learning rate or what will be the rate of learning or what will be the rate of convergence of the learning algorithm. And uh, the learning of course, what we are discussing about is uh, the gradient descent approach or the stochastic gradient descent approach and more particularly the gradient descent approach which is considered is what is known as mini batch gradient descent approach. So, we are talking about this uh, uh, deciding about the appropriate learning rate, so that your uh, back propagation learning algorithm becomes more efficient. Uh, so, in the previous class, we discussed about that what are the different challenges that you face in the gradient descent algorithm itself. So, when I talked about these challenges, one of the challenge of course, as we said that how do you decide about the learning rate or when you are updating the weights, weight vectors or the parameters of your classifier, what is the step size that has to be considered for updating the parameters. If the step size is very large, in that case there is a possibility that while updating the parameters, uh, the algorithm will uh, simply jump over the minimum error location or when the step size is very small, it will take large number of iterations to reach the minimum. So, that can be explained with the help of this particular diagram. Say, if I assume that uh, initial weight vector say w0 has been set somewhere over here, then you find that here the gradient, if I follow the gradient descent approach, then this weight vector or weight has to be modified or updated in this direction for reduction of the loss. Now, here if the updation step is very small, then at the next point the weight will be somewhere over here. So, at the next instant the weight will be somewhere over here, at the next instant it will come over here and so on. So, as a result it takes large number of iterations for convergence. Whereas, if the step size is very large, then it is possible that at the next moment your w1 will come somewhere over here. So, this becomes the position of the w1. So, as a result you are jumping over this minimum location, this might be your optimum weight uh, vector which will minimize the error. So, choice of proper learning rate or the proper step size for updation of the weight is very, very important. The second challenge in uh, this gradient descent approach that we have said is like this. It might be possible that I can have a predefined schedule that how the learning rate or the step size will change over the number of iterations or over the epochs. But if you do that, it is the same step size which will be applied to all the parameters or, or all the components of your weight vector, which may not be very appropriate, because the gradient may be very large with respect to certain parameters or it may be very small with respect to some other parameters. So, the parameters with uh, for which the gradient is very large for those parameters I may like to have smaller step size and the parameters for which the gradient is quite small I may like to have a larger step size. So, that is very difficult to define beforehand. So, that means predefined schedule of learning rate is extremely difficult and it may be possible that you may have to update or you, have, you may have to tune the learning rate on the fly as you go on learning over different iterations. So, that is not possible if I go for predefined schedule of the learning rate. The other kind of uh, problem that you face is that uh, while learning, when the algorithm comes across the saddle points, saddle points are nothing but the points 
where in one dimension uh, the slope is in the positive direction, whereas in the other dimension the slope might be in the negative direction. So, an example of saddle point is over here. So, this is what is the saddle point. Here I have a saddle point. So, here you find that in this direction the slope is positive, it is sloping up, whereas in this direction it is sloping down. So, in such cases, the gradient descent approach finds it very difficult to navigate. The reason being such that saddle points are surrounded by plateau, where on all the points on the plateau, the error is almost same. That means, the gradient vanishes. And as the gradient is almost 0, the algorithm does not learn anything. So, these are the different challenges that you face when you use uh, the gradient descent approach. So, for that what uh, uh, to overcome this problem, what we have to think of the different approaches by which the gradient descent algorithm can be optimized further. Or in other words, what we would like to have is an approach or the algorithms by which the gradient descent or the back propagation learning algorithm can be more efficient. So, one of the approach that can be used for making the gradient descent learning algorithm very efficient is momentum optimizer. So, today we are we will try to uh, see the different types of optimizers. One of them is momentum optimizer, the other one is uh, adagrad and we will talk about other different optimizing techniques uh, in uh, our subsequent lectures. So, first let us see that what is this momentum optimizer. You find that uh, this gradient descent algorithm, I can have analogy of this with an example that I put a ball on a hilly terrain initially with an initial velocity of 0. So, it is something like this that suppose I put a ball over here, let me change the color. Okay. So, suppose I put a ball somewhere over here with an initial velocity which is 0 and this ball has got certain height and because of this it has got an initial potential energy and the potential energy is given by u is equal to m g h where obviously, m is the mass of the ball, g is the acceleration due to gravity and h is the height of the ball. And there will be a force which will be acting on the ball which is negative of the gradient of the potential energy. That means, the force which acts on the ball is, is equal to minus gradient of the potential energy which is u. And under influence of this force, the ball starts sliding along uh, this hilly terrain or along the surface. So, it moves like this and as it moves down this hilly terrain, it gains momentum and subsequently the ball reaches this minimum point which is the plateau and because it has a momentum, it will overshoot the plateau and will start moving in the other direction and how much it will move in the other direction that depends upon how much is the momentum it has gained when it has reached the minimum point and also what is the opposing friction or what is the uh, damping force acting on it. So, while going on on the other side, it will come to rest at certain point of time and from there again it will start coming back to the minimum positions. So, it will perform a number of oscillations around the minimum position before it settles at the bottom of the surface. So, our gradient descent approach that we are discussing that can be uh, compared with this uh, uh, particular analogy. Okay, so, this algorithm works fine as long as my surface is an well behaved surface that is along every parameter in every direction the curvature or the slope of the surface is uh, almost same. But you think of a situation where I have a surface which is an error surface, where the curvature is very small in certain direction 
and it is very high in some other direction. So, if it is so, then the gradient or the direction of the gradient in the direction where the curvature is high will be very high and in the direction where the curvature is low, the component of the gradient in that direction will be very low. So, in this figure what I have shown is, it is uh, the planar projection of uh, an hyper ellipsoid, where the surface I can consider to be an hyper ellipsoid and in three dimension it is an ellipsoid. So, I, if I take a projection on the plane, I assume that my vectors are two dimensional vectors having components w 1 and w 2. And every closed contour on this uh, diagram, this they represent loci of points of equal energy. Okay. So, given this kind of situation, now you find that if I my initially the weight vector is somewhere over here or if I put a ball somewhere over here, as we said before that under the influence of the gradient of the potential energy, which is nothing but the force on it acting on it, it will start sliding down the surface. And the minima of the surface is somewhere over here, somewhere over here I have the minima. So, this gradient force which is acting on this will have two different components. One component is in the vertical direction and other component is in the horizontal direction. And as we have said that the curvature of this surface is very high in the vertical direction compared to the curvature of the surface in the horizontal direction. So, as a result the component of the gradient which acts on this particle in the vertical direction is very high compared to the component of the gradient in the horizontal direction. As a result, the force which is acting on this ball will be in this particular direction. Now, assuming that it comes to rest over here, from here again you compute the gradient, it moves in this direction as again the component in the vertical direction is higher than the component in the horizontal direction. From here again it will move downward direction like this it will move in the upward direction like this and it will try on oscillating and you find that because of this to and fro oscillation in the vertical direction which is very high in the vertical direction, the number of such iterations the algorithm will take before it converges at the minima will be very high. So, this is what you have in case of a typical gradient descent algorithm and you find that you need large, large number of iterations because the gradient in one direction or gradient in the direction of w 2 is much larger than the gradient in the direction of w 1. So, I can avoid this problem if I bring in a concept of momentum. So, the concept is something like this that again I assume the ball is over here, it is gradient force acting on this. So, the ball comes somewhere over here. Now, at this location, the gradient working on this ball may be in this direction, whereas if I also consider the component of the momentum, that is the force due to momentum of the ball which is in this direction. So, if I consider both this gradient force as well as this momentum force to find out what will be the net force which is acting in this ball. So, the net force if I take it which is sum of these two forces, the net force acting on the ball will be in this direction. And I assume that the ball will move in the direction of this resultant force. So, here you find that instead of you are updating the weight vector in this direction, you are updating the weight vector in this direction. So, as a result you are moving faster towards the minimum location and that is what is the effect of considering the momentum along with a gradient descent. So, what will be the impact of this in our algorithm? So, if you remember the gradient descent algorithm works like this that I want to find out the weight the parameter at time t plus 1 and this parameter at time t plus 1 
is obtained from the parameter of the weight at time t minus gradient of the loss function where loss is a function of the parameter of the function of the weight vector w and this gradient has to be taken with respect to my parameter vector which is w. This is what is my normal stochastic gradient descent algorithm. And now what I do is in addition to this I want to add a momentum term. right? So, I assume that at time instant t that is w t is somewhere over here. This is the location of w t and it comes to w t from location w t minus 1 and with a gradient vector which is v t minus 1. So, this was somewhere w t minus 1 from w t minus 1 it comes to location w t with a resultant force under the influence of a resultant force v t minus 1 which is acting on this. And at this location w t I have two forces acting on it one is the gradient force which is this gradient of L w with respect to w and other one I consider is the momentum force which is some gamma times v t minus 1. So, what I am adding is I am adding this momentum term to this gradient force. So, as a result w t minus 1 the weight updation equation will now be w t plus 1 is equal to w t minus this gradient term which I had before it remains as it is L w t. In addition to this what I am adding over here is the momentum term which is nu v t minus 1. So, this is the momentum term and this is the gradient term. So, under the influence of these two now the net update direction of the weight vector will be in this direction instead of in this direction. And that is how your gradient uh, descent approach with momentum improves the rate of convergence or makes uh, this uh, back propagation learning more efficient. So, this particular equation I can put in, it in another form I can write a gradient say v t in terms of v t minus 1 which is minus nu times v t minus 1 plus gradient of L w with respect to w and after I, after I write this my weight updation equation can be w t plus 1 becomes w t minus v t. So, these two taken together becomes the gradient descent or the back propagation learning algorithm considering the momentum effect. And as a result of this you find that if I put the two figures side by side on the left hand side the weight updation sequence without SD uh, uh, without the momentum term is shown over here. So, these are the weight updation sequences with momentum term you find that the weight updation sequence will be something like this. So, when I consider this momentum term the gradient descent algorithm or stochastic gradient descent algorithm becomes much more efficient. Now, there has been another modification on this momentum approach or the stochastic gradient descent with momentum that has been suggested which improves this uh, momentum optimizer to a certain extent and that is what is nested of accelerated gradient approach or known as NAG. So, what is NAG? you find that in every case uh, with momentum what I am assuming is say my 
at time t, so I have w t somewhere over here. I come to w t with a momentum uh, with a previous force which is equal to v t minus 1. And due to this, I have a momentum term which is nu times v t minus 1. I have the gradient at this location which is delta L and under influence of these two, the net displacement or the weight updation which will be done parameter updation will be given by the sum of these two vectors which is in this direction. Now, how this acceleration can be done or the gradient can be accelerated is this, if I know beforehand because I know what is my momentum and I assume that due to the effect of this momentum, what will be my position after effect of this momentum that is where I am going to lead over here. And if I know that what is going to be my position because of the momentum effect in future, then instead of considering the gradient at this location, I can find out what will be the gradient at this particular location. So, if I can do that, then suppose I will have the gradient vector which is falling in this direction, then I can have an update instead of this, I can have update location update direction which is sum of this momentum term and the gradient computed at the future location. So, this is what is my look ahead gradient, I am computing the gradient beforehand. So, I call it a look ahead gradient. So, you find that if I modify or if I update the parameters using this look ahead gradient, in some cases this look ahead gradient approach that may even improve the gradient descent algorithm further. So, just to illustrate this, let us assume that we have say at time w t, the w is over here or my parameter is over here. And I have come to this parameter following a v t which is given this. So, this was my or v t minus 1 which was in this direction. So, at this location I have nu times v t, uh, v t minus 1, I have gradient over here which say acts in this direction and the under the influence of these two, I will have a net update which moves over here. Now, with this accelerated gradient, what I can do is I can assume that the position will be somewhere over here in future and I now compute the gradient vector at this location. So, if I compute the gradient vector at this location, I will my weight updation will be over here. So, you find that this is the location of the minimum loss. So, using this in nested of accelerated gradient approach, you are moving faster to the minimum and if you do not this accelerated gradient approach, you are moving in this direction. So, now you will need more number of iterations or more number of epochs before you come to the minimum. So, this NAG or nested of accelerated gradient helps in improving the gradient descent algorithm further. So, till now we have discussed about two approaches, one is the gradient descent with momentum and next the gradient descent with a mo modified momentum approach where we are computing the gradient at a future location which is known as, uh, which we are calling as look ahead gradient operation. I am computing the gradient at a location where I can guess that that will be my location in future. And this approach that is NAG or nested of accelerated gradient approach improves the performance of the gradient descent algorithm even further. So, these are the two approaches that can be done. One is the momentum based gradient descent, other one is accelerated gradient descent. However, you find that uh, in both of these cases, I need a hyperparameter. So, the hyperparameter that we have said is in case of this gradient descent, 
what I had is W t plus 1 is equal to W t plus some nu times V t minus some eta times uh, gradient of L with respect to W. And this nu and eta, these are the hyperparameters which determines how fast I am going to move towards the minimum loss location. And these are the hyperparameters. And in case of both this momentum optimizer as well as NAG or nested of accelerated gradient, I require these hyperparameters to be set manually, which is a difficult thing. And as these hyperparameters decide the learning rate, values of these hyperparameters are very, very important. Not only that, this algorithm uses the same learning rate or the same step size for all the parameters. For W1, W2, I have the same value of eta, I have the same value of nu. And as we have discussed before, that maybe, I mean, and that is what we have seen also, that in the vertical direction, your gradient is much more than the gradient in the horizontal direction. So, if I can have my step size in the vertical direction lower than the step size in the horizontal direction, the learning will be much more efficient, but which is not done with this momentum based uh, optimizer or even this nested of accelerated gradient approach. So, that is another problem which is faced in momentum optimizer as well as in NAG. Uh, you also find that uh, the high dimensional and mostly non-convex nature of the loss function that may lead to different sensitivity on different dimensions. So, as a result, I may like to have different learning rate for different parameters, which is also not possible using this momentum based optimizer or NAG. So, I will stop here today. In our next lecture, we will try to see some other algorithms where these concerns that having the same learning rate or avoiding having the same learning rate for all different parameters that can be improved further. Thank you.